All right, so this is gonna be a video about how I do formative assessments using bell ringers. Okay, so the first thing that the students do as they walk into the room, before the bell rings, they need to open their laptop and go to my website. So the website is math.mrozarka.org. And then from there, they need to go to my lesson. So let's just say the class is calculus. They would go to calculus one and click lessons. If it was intermediate algebra, they'd go down here to intermediate algebra and click lessons. So they're gonna click lessons here. And then they go to whatever day it is uh, for that lesson. So I have all my days divided up for the year, and they're dated here, and then it's also a count for how many days we are into that semester. So let's just say they wanted to click on day 50. Okay, say it was day 50. There's updates at the top. This is just to kind of remind me of what to tell them, and then the bell ringer would be right here, and it says it's it's based on the antiderivative. And so there's four questions right here. There's usually four to five questions the student have to, students have to answer. So on their um, on their computer, they would be pulling this up. This is also going to be projected on the screen as well. For them to look at, they would have a piece of paper, uh, something to write with, and a calculator to work these problems out. So they're working these problems out, answering these. While they're doing that, this is timed. So I have a timer going. Uh, usually I give about 10 minutes for um, four to five problems. And then from there, they would click this submission form off to the side for Calc 1. They'd click submission form, and it would bring them to a screen that looks like this. From here, they would click what block they're in. So let's just say it's fourth block, and then it's a bell ringer. Um, they could choose exit ticket, because I, I use this form for exit tickets as well. Or sometimes I just use this form for, for other, other like little mini quizzes or other formative assessments, um, things that aren't usually uh, counted in the grade. And then the next one says assignment submission. This is for something separate. This is if they actually are pasting a link for me um, to use uh, for an assignment. So we're not going to worry about that. For the questions right here, this is what they would use for the bell ringer. So they, they, would, they would answer the question. Okay, they thought question one was A, question two was D, question three was B, and then question four was D. Now there was no five. If you notice, none of these questions are required. So it, it won't, if they just, they just have to keep five blank for it to go in correctly into the submission to be graded. And then it says right here, send me a copy of my request. If they wanted to, they could get a request of their responses. Uh, I recommend this just in case they ever think they did actually submit and they didn't. Um, this email is kind of a good confirmation um, or proof that they did submit. Uh, and then they would click submit and it says thanks. Okay, so from here, then I would pause the, the screen or freeze the screen or, or just turn the screen um, into the mute mode so they're not actually seeing this. So from, from here on, this is me uh, behind the scenes, um, quickly getting all the responses, grading the responses, and then showing a breakdown of the scores and then going over them with the students. Okay, so here's how it kind of looks behind the scenes. So the students would not be seeing this right now. So from here, the, the students submitted. Okay, so I don't need this screen anymore. So once the time is up and the students submitted all the responses, I would go on my website under this teacher tab right here. And what the teacher tab is is basically just things for me. I try to keep everything where it's where it's in-house. It's on the website. I don't have to be roaming through all my uh, Google Docs um, trying to look for the grader. So I kind of just put really quick links on my website for myself. Um, that students can't actually access because they don't have uh, they don't have access to them. It's, it's set to privacy, um, so only I would be able to access them. So I would click on this response data tab right here. It would open up the Google spreadsheet of all the responses. Now what I did here is I put all of the students. I just replaced all the students' last names um, with the student one at bps101.net because I don't want to have names actually on this. But if you scroll to the very bottom, you can see my name that I just submitted a little bit ago with my answers right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm only gonna be looking at the class that, I, that I'm currently in, so let's just say it's fourth hour, I would only be looking at these, these fourth hour data right here. So I only want this data right here. And then from here, I would copy this and paste it into this Calculus One Greater tab right here. This Calculus One Greater tab, what I would be doing is pasting in all the student data from this previous tab right here where it says like username, this is where I would paste it in. If you notice, I only copied and pasted the student's name and then the rest of the answers, and it will paste nicely in here. Now, what this, this whole tab basically does is I programmed it to count how many A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's there are. Um, it'll figure out the itemized analysis for every single response that a student chooses. I'm going to pick A, B, C, D, and E for each question. So if they picked A for number one, it would be in 
in this column right here. Um, for number two, it's all this data, three, four, and five. This column right here will tell me which ones each student got wrong or right. It's blue if it's right, it's red if it's wrong. Right now they're all blue because the answers right here are blank and the answers here are blank. So the, the, this program is saying, oh, it's, it's right currently. Um, so that's what that is. And then over here, it's going to actually calculate the grade for me. Um, and then here will be the average. So I'm going to paste the data in just so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. So I paste all this in. And then as you can see now, a bunch of things showed up here. Now, one of the problems right now is it's saying that every student gets numbers one through four wrong because they're all red, and then five is getting it right. So that's why everyone has a 20% here, except for this one student because they left one of these blank. So let's just fill that in for them. Since they left, since this one's left blank, well, um, I'm going to have to change this so this one's not counted. I'll show you how I do that. And since these are all red, it's because this is, the answers right here are blank when the answers right here aren't. So what I need to do is fill in the answers. So again, the, the screen would be frozen right now. The students wouldn't be seeing this because then they'd be seeing other students' grades. But I would quickly just fill this in or already have it filled in ahead of time. And as you can see, the grades are changing over here. And then this last one right here is blank, and all of these are blank, so it's giving the students extra point that they didn't actually earn. So what I did is I, I'm just going to put a space in here and hit enter, and then it just won't even count that last question. So now it turns white, so it's not even being counted. Um, and I just programmed it to turn different colors based on um, the score for it. Okay, so now you can see right here, the A's right here, there's 10 A's, so it actually count up how many A's there are right here. Um, there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which it counts up right here as 10. How many C's there are, if you count these up, there's 9 C's, and then the rest are 5 F's. And you can see the total right here, there's 24 students that submitted. Um, I can see right away who didn't submit based on the names right here. I can alphabetize them by last name if I want. The average is an 80 um, for this particular one. Uh, so that's that's that data, that, that data. Right here, the itemized analysis, I color-coded it where if it's over 80%, I just made it so it's our school colors, so Batavia school colors of red and gold. So as you can see, this 100% is, is red and gold, and then this one right here is red and gold because it's over 80%. If you notice, this one right here is 75%, so it didn't actually change color, and this 58% didn't um, change color as well because it's not 80% or higher. Okay, so this is showing me that 80% of the students, or 100% of the students got number one right because everyone picked A, and then 88% picked D. Um, the general rule that I follow in my classes is as long as they got 80% of that problem right, we usually just don't go over it, but the other ones that we got lower than, we do go over it. Now, if a student does want to go over the problems that they did get um, over 80% on, I will do that as well. Or sometimes I just leave it for individual class time to go over with the students while they, they, they're working on uh, the material for that day. Okay, so the students aren't seeing this. This is something for that I would look at later. I would just I just paste this in. I don't have to even put the grades in. The thing that the students are would be looking at is this Calculus 1 breakdown tab that I click right here. And what it shows is basically the data right up here. This 100%, 88%, 75%, and 58%. And so it's showing all of the breakdowns of... A, B, C, D, and E for the item analysis. So I shouldn't say it shows the correct. It really shows the A, B, C, D. It shows this data up here. I just programmed it into a graph that will change based on the data that's pasted in here. So as you can see, number one, everybody picked A. Number two, most people picked, so that over that 80% picked D. So we wouldn't go over one and two. Number three, like 75%, like you can see from the, the data right here, about 75% picked B, so I would go over that with the students. And then this is showing the whole time, so I'm going over this with the students so they can actually see how they compare, what they chose as their response is how they can compare to the rest of the class. So it's like, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm good on that. I'm, I'm For number one, I, I'm part of that the rest of the class that picked A. But if they're one of those few people that picked you know, B for number two here, then they can kind of say, okay, well, I really got to get my act together. Most people are getting this, and I'm not. Maybe I need to come in for extra help. Maybe I need to get help from my classmates or ask questions in class um, and such kind of fix whatever the issue is with these problems. Same with this one. And then, and then number four, um, I, I kind of tell the students, if, if you notice it's really close and students are either picking you know, C and D are really close, the amounts right here, obviously that's a problem and, and you shouldn't feel too bad because it's probably a confusing problem. And, and what I usually tend to do is I leave the last um, one, the last question for every single bell ringer to be something completely new that they've never seen. So it's building off of what they've had previously, but they've never seen a problem like this. Um, so usually they're not going to get 80% 
on that last one. And, and they know this. This is just, you know, I do these every Monday through Wednesday. So the students are well aware that the, the last one is going to be the hardest one and that they shouldn't um, be too upset if they don't get a certain grade for that. Now, back to this grade here, I do sometimes put this grade this part right here into power school, but it never actually counts toward the grade for that class, um, unless it's like a special circumstance. But um, just because it's formative, I don't count it in the grade book. So that's basically how I do bell ringers, um, how I go over with a bell ringer with the class. Um, I show them their breakdown of how they compare with the rest of the class and then go over the, the actual problems on the board. So uh, if you have any questions about this, if you want to actually use this program for bell ringers, just so you can you can use a similar method to test your students and see where they're at um, each day. I'd be more than willing to share. I'd, I'd also would really, really love some, some input uh, from you guys of how I can make this better. Um, I'm always looking for new ways to uh, improve what I'm working on. So uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions, comments, uh, let me know.